Let's do it. Okay. Welcome back, guys. I don't even know what episode this is, honestly. It's like 40-something, almost 50, but welcome back to The Mindset Effect. Today, we have Pierce with us. We're very excited about this. Pierce, you're 19. You're young Wait, is he from like UK? Us. Is he from the UK? No, no. He, this isn't a UK guest, so okay. no fun accents this time. But <laughs> no, I think, Pierce, you're from around the Columbus area, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Upper and you, yeah, and then you go Sick. to USC, I think it is, right? And take mm-hmm. a gap year. Yeah. So you want to go oh, ahead sure. and give a quick. Yeah, you want to go ahead and give a quick intro, just about like you, your background, et cetera, et cetera, whatever you want to mention that you think is important. Yeah, of course. So as you said, my name is Pierre Shaw. I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I was always one of the more like, I guess, driven people out of my friends. Um, I grew up playing lacrosse. We had a very intense like lacrosse program at our school. And that's kind of what my thing was in high school. And I really got onto a personal development track when I started listening to Lewis Howe's podcast. And I just went down the personal development rabbit hole. I know, Andrew, we talked about it before, just reading all the books, um, just like soaking up as much as I can. And um, I went out to college at USC my first year and I liked it. But honestly, I thought like I would find more people that were like super driven and kind of like personal development growth mindset type people. And uh, I just didn't as much. And I went to class and went from class to class thinking like, like what? I, I was confused because I was having to take classes that I wasn't very interested in. Um, and I thought there would be more like entrepreneurial minded people around. So that kind of got me frustrated. And then like uh, when COVID happened, I decided to try and start my own business. So I've done a couple of different things. Uh, most recently I'm running a podcast called The Young Entrepreneur Show. Able, which has allowed me to connect with a bunch of young entrepreneurs and um, people with that growth mindset, people who want to take life to the next level. So that's really cool. That's I've had a blast doing that. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit of background about me. How did yeah, you get I've the heard whole that, day? I've heard oh, yeah. that at USC, <laughs> though, like most students there are like kind of like cocky. Is that true? Because most of them are from like really wealthy backgrounds. Yeah, I could see that. There's a lot of privilege there um, at USC. And, and there, it's, there's a mix, like, be, depending on how, what group you're around. Um, but definitely a lot of privilege. And two, maybe I wasn't able to see, like, and find my specific group. Because, you know, like, we were only in school in person for, like, three quarters of the year because of COVID and things like that. So, I mean, maybe if I was there for longer, I would have found that like niche group. But yeah, I think there there definitely is a a case of that um, privilege there. Yeah, I also forgot to mention there are going to be plenty of interruptions. This is virtual. I'm sure you know. So feel free to interrupt any of us. It's going to happen. Um, But yeah, so what I was going to ask is like, how did you come up with the whole idea for the podcast? Like, Where did that come from? Like, why did you go down that road instead of something else? Yeah, definitely. Um, so it was heavily influenced by my love for podcasts. Like I really love listening to podcasts and just, I don't know, listen to all these, uh, personal development ones. But also when I was out in school in LA, I met an entrepreneur named Brian LaFermento and I became good friends with him, did some work for him. And, uh, I was talking to him one day and I just like kind of asked him like, Hey man, like, do you think I should start a podcast? Like I know you have, and it's done a lot for you. Um, And he's like, dude, totally. Like you definitely should. So he kind of gave me the push over the edge. And some of the reasons that I started a podcast were to, like, as I mentioned earlier, connect with other young entrepreneurs, because I knew that just me going up and trying to ask someone for their time um, probably wouldn't go through. Like people are busy people are um doing things and and so having a podcast allows you like leverage to kind of have a conversation with people and then also to learn from them i mean i've learned so much uh from the people i've interviewed and then also start to like honestly like kind of position myself as like an authority and a thought uh leader because i feel like i have some like i'm one step ahead of some people and I can help people and I can derive some credibility from 
um, having a podcast, speaking with young entrepreneurs, because people see they're like, oh, you have these big guests on your show. So you must know what you're kind of talking about. This is like what Lewis House has done, you know, like he interviews these world class people. And now Lewis House is like, has a ton of credibility. Mm-hmm. Are you a are, business are you major? A... Uh, I'm accounting, uh, but okay. I'm currently taking a gap year. Got you. Yeah, so lucky. I wish I could take a gap year. <laughs> well, could. We went over that well, whole conversation. you could, Andrew. You yeah, could. yeah, I could, I could. I won't get into that whole conversation. <laughs> well, why are your parents? Your parents? Like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> oh, our parents, man. Yeah, you know, parents. They, they so much. <laughs> yeah, anyone listening is probably like, oh my God, parents, man. Like, oh. Hey. Especially when you have like an entrepreneurial mind, like parents can be a fun time. But if you're lucky oh, enough to parents have don't parents, understand. oh yeah, if you're lucky enough to have parents that like actually push you towards that, like freaking, I'm so jealous. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've seen so many people recently who actually have had parents. Um, so like Kevin and I were trying to get this one girl on the podcast. Um, I think I had mentioned her to you, Pierce. Uh, her name's yeah, like Alyssa, yeah. Alyssa Carlson or something like that, or Carson. And her dad is like her personal assistant is like keeping up with all of her stuff Dude, like, that, that so is funny. yeah like that that's is so awesome like that is amazing having like a parent that is like that supportive of everything you do that they're willing to almost be like your kind of person listen assistant. to this see i'm gonna interrupt you because we nope, can't yeah, you're show. Good. Um, <laughs> but so my like i met a new friend out here in scottsdale his name's caleb maddox and when caleb was younger um his dad instead of like paying for his him to do chores paying Caleb to do chores his dad paid him for every book he read and then wrote a summary on like a success book like a business book like his dad paid him like 20 bucks for like a one-page paper or something like talk about um, parents supporting the entrepreneurial drive and ambition and things like that like that's like a great example Dude, that's yeah, what, how did, wait, that's like, how did you, that's like gamifying your um, yeah process uh, I, yeah parents that are listening take note like that that's a that's a good <laughs> going about take dinner. note take note yeah parents. yeah please take note so we have like kids that are more supported and going into like those directions um how did you meet him i feel like that name sounds really familiar and i feel like that story sounds familiar yeah of course so yeah, um caleb is such a familiar yeah. name well like the last name too i don't know the whole name just seemed really familiar i feel like i've talked to them oh wait caleb minnick yeah maddox m-a-d-d-i-s oh, okay I, really I know a guy called caleb minnick who works the tesla Never mind. okay yeah no caleb's like been super successful he was a millionaire by age like 16 just absolutely crazy um but i met him because i started doing some work for one of his friends um, who started a restaurant marketing company and we essentially we run Facebook ads and stuff for restaurants, helping them grow as fast as a tech company. Um, And so I met him and then I actually got to meet him in person and I came out here to Scottsdale because my brothers are out here. And then also my friend Tristan is Tristan Larson, who's friends with Caleb. And then we were, me we were at a coffee shop one day and like he came in and it was just there go from there i'm gonna meet up with them actually after this so I love it. yeah nice. just it's crazy one thing i'll point out like it's crazy how like i looked up to caleb for so long and i just like ran into him in scottsdale like it's just so bizarre but it just shows you like what's i guess what what's out there you know what can happen mm-hmm. Wait, so did you just like see him sitting down at the table or something and be like, whoa, I know who you are? Yeah, so actually, it's kind of a funny story. Um, So I walked into a coffee shop and his dad was sitting there. And I'm like, this guy looks familiar. (laughs) And because he like, when he was growing up, he posted a lot with his dad because his dad was like so supportive of his vision and stuff. So I went up to his dad and I'm like, you Matt Maddox? He's like, yeah, man. And so I talked to him for a little bit and then he posted me on his story or something. Right. Then Caleb saw, and then Caleb walked up to me like later in the day. So just absolutely yeah, crazy. That's nuts. Yeah, wait, see- what, <laughs> wait, what sort of business does he run? Like marketing stuff? Yeah. So, so he, um, he, what, like his major company right now is called apex for kids. And he essentially is kind of like a Tony Robbins for like kids. Like they have a subscription service, um, $7 a month that kids can, can uh, buy, parents can buy for kids. 
and they have like videos, motivational videos. He, he's written a bunch of books and really just helping people in that space. It's interesting. I haven't thought about that before, but that's kind of fascinating. But see people, this is something I'm going to highlight. This is what happens when you put yourself out there and actually try exactly. new things. Exactly. Exactly. Like I took kind of a leap to come out here. Like I booked a one way and I'm actually going to be staying out here for a couple more weeks. I just told you, Andrew, but it's like, sometimes you just got to go for it, honestly. Mm -hmm. And yeah. put yourself in positions to get lucky or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. People always talk about luck and it's like, I'm sure there are certain aspects of luck, but I think a lot of it is like the situations that you put yourself in, you know, to actually be able to have that luck, you know, you're never going to get lucky of having like Bill Gates walk into your house. Like that makes no sense, you know, like, but you might find him on the road somewhere or something and maybe you can invest in your company or whatever your piece of luck is. Totally. Yeah. Like hanging out where, where those people hang out. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, and I think, I think that's why it's important. Like, you know, all of us are ambitious. We've met. Uh, it's like the more that you become the person that you want to be, the more that you'll be surrounded by people who are like you and who are like who you want to be. And that'll really help you get to where you want to go. Something on that too is like, I was watching a video today and it really just struck me. It's like, you have the power to like decide right now that like, I know this might sound like crazy, but like, you become the person before you get the results. And right now, like you have the power to decide. And Andrew, you've done this so well. Like you just like decided that you were going to write your own story. And that really struck me. And I've started to do that. It's like, I have control. Like I can, like me, there's nothing in my body really that's forcing me maybe to be like shy or to hold back or things like that. Like I can like decide to, to do it and it sounds like a lot and, and it's hard but I think it's just that realization is key oh yeah and and I don't think people realize how powerful you really become when all it takes is a decision to you to for you to become something like imagine if you could just decide like it's just some kind of magic thing where you just decide that something's gonna happen and it happens every time and it's like you know what I'm gonna be really freaking muscular next year and then it's like well next year you're like super muscular like oh that was cool like I didn't know that that would work and it's like you literally have that power you just need to make the decision and then like stick with that decision for however long it takes you to get to that goal that you have exactly exactly and I it's think having confidence in your own future mm-hmm no, that's so true, Kevin. I think, and, yeah, I think a lot of people like they plan, you know, like, hey, a year later, I might, you know, like they, they might get a job, but they might like think like, hey, a year later, I might not be at this job. So they're making contingency plans. Like you just need to have confidence in your own future and build off that. So, that's yeah. totally true. And I think that's something that it's so true, but like for people is you're like what you do now or who you are now is a result of like things you've done, like, like two years before, like results don't just like happen. Like what we're talking about sounds awesome. Like you can decide right now to start writing your story, but you're not going to see the results for like maybe a year, maybe six months, maybe heck two years. But the way to get there is to just, decide and stay with that like kevin says be confident don't have like so many contingency plans to oh if this doesn't go right and and you do need to pivot sometimes but mm -hmm. deciding and then just like sticking with it i feel like is this huge yeah and i think it's it's important for people to realize that it is okay to pivot like you know you can become less ambitious and you can become more ambitious it just kind of depends on like who you are and what you want to be. It's like, I always say like, it's perfectly okay to decide to be like a garbage man or something, you know, it just like depends on what exactly you want from your life. And it's okay to be more ambitious or less ambitious. It just depends. Well, totally true. That's so true. It's like you do what you want. Like what, what do you actually want? Like, mm -hmm. because we have the power to like decide, like, if, if you want to be a millionaire, literally, like, you can. It's going to be very, like, tough to get there. But we have the power to decide and, and stay committed to that. So, exactly, But if, yeah. if you don't, like, if you want to just get a job, like, if that's going to make you happy, then do that. Like, 
you should do whatever makes you happy. Yeah, it really pisses me off to see all these things nowadays where people like they hate on either the hustle culture or they hate on people who don't live in the hustle culture. It's like, make your own fucking decisions. <laughs> like, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, I think it's so frustrating to me because everybody just tries to impose their beliefs on others. And it's like, you know, if you don't think that working 16 hours a day is a good thing, then don't do that. Like, you don't need to do that. Just because I do, that doesn't make me a bad person or give you any reason to like try to tear me down for it. Like the amount of people that hate on me for how much I work. And so, you know, I will never like force, you know, other people to, you know, work tons of hours. Like I will call you out if you're talking big stuff and you're not actually putting in the work to get there, but I'm never going to be like, Oh, you have to work tons. Like, it yeah, just it's like, it's got to align you. with, it's got to align with the vision. Yeah, like exactly. How much you work has to um, be aligned with where you want to be in the future. Yeah. So and I think you have goals, to be, you gotta be working hard. Yeah. And you have to be smart and intentional about that too. I and think also like, I think people like, they don't realize like you have to make sacrifices to get to where you want to be. Like sometimes you just have to sacrifice sleep. Mm -hmm. You have to sacrifice a bit of your health to get to where you want to be. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I think honestly, to me, there's nothing more beautiful than someone who's going after their goals and their dreams. Like, you know, the way that I wake up every morning, like feeling like the feelings that I get after going after my goals, you know, it's so funny. Cause I remember watching like bits and pieces of like the NFL draft a long time ago. And it would almost bring tears to my eyes thinking like these people literally spent their whole lives obsessed with this one goal, you know, to be drafted to the NFL, to be one of the greatest. And like, they got there. And like, it's so funny because the average person just looks at this and is like, oh yeah, I got this person got drafted to my favorite team, but they don't think about the tons of time and the sacrifices that were put in to get to that level. Like, you don't think of the dream behind the goals. Like you just see it happen. You don't think of like the, the mentality that that person has of like, you know, they worked their whole life to get there and like their life revolved around that. Like that is such a big thing for them. That is so important to them. We don't ever think about that. For sure. That's a great point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why it's like, you know, you'll see injuries or something like professional sports. And like, that always makes me so sad because again, these people, this is their whole goal. Like this is their dream. Imagine being an entrepreneur and then like you have some mental something and you just can't like do it anymore. <laughs> you know, your like whole goal, your whole dream is done, especially once you've already gotten to like part of it and you love it. And then it's just like, Oh, you're running a successful business. And then something comes along and like mentally you're shot, you know, like, that would be absolutely terrible. And that's why I think like too, though, it's so important to attach like happiness and like worth to your progress mm -hmm. and like to your actions. Because if you attach like your happiness or like, I'm only going to be happy if I get this result, make this amount of money, things like that, like you're just going to not be happy because inevitably results take like sometimes a lot longer they may take shorter, but sometimes take a lot longer than you think. Like we all think that, oh, I'm going to start this. It's going to be profitable from day one. And sure, that might happen, but there's also a good chance that it's not. So I think it's important to keep in mind, like as long as I'm like actually moving forward and making progress on my goals and stuff, like that's going to be, that's great. Because something I've noticed from like all the entrepreneurs I follow and have talked to, it's like they fall in love with the process of getting better. Exactly. And then when the process becomes natural and you start getting results, it's like, it's such a pleasant surprise and yeah. it, it just perpetuates that positive cycle. Yeah. It's like, that's it's what like it knows what, for me. That's what it knows for me. So yeah. It's like what I've been like talking about recently is people talk about like work-life balance and like, for me, you know, there's no differentiation there. Like my work is my life. Like that's what my life revolves around. Obviously it's not going to be the same for everyone. Yeah. Like, so I, so I actually have a new interpretation of that now. It's just like, you can work a lot, but like also like spend time with other people. That's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Yeah. Like, don't yeah, just like I, sit in your freaking room for like 24 <laughs> hours a day and like, never go out and meet new people or like hang well, out I mean, with I, friends. Well, I mean, I think it depends on what you want. Like, you know, if your if your goals are 100% centered around like what you want to achieve and you understand what you're going to be losing and sacrificing to get there, True. then I think it's yeah. fine if like, if you want to if work. You're aware you of the like, sacrifice, yeah. Hours. Yeah. Like I think something that people don't think about is they set these huge audacious goals, 
but they don't actually think about what they have to give up and what they have to sacrifice to get there. You know, like, oh, you want to be like super freaking rich and like make this huge impact. Well, you know, spending every single night, five hours in a bar is probably not going to help you get there. Like, (laughs) you know, maybe you somehow get super freaking lucky or something and do achieve it, but like, it's a lot less likely for you to actually get there. Um, And so like something I've noticed from me is, I care less and less about anyone else's opinion on things. And the biggest thing is I look at myself and I'm constantly roasting myself. You know, I have goals that I want to set for myself. I have things like I have a feeling that I'm looking for with myself where I can look at myself and be like, I truly achieved like what I wanted to achieve. And uh, to your point of like being happy, it's like, I'm 100% always happy, but I'm not content. You know, there's a big difference of like, I'm happy, but I still want I go for more because I think I can achieve more, you know, I can do more. I'm going to keep trying. And I don't really ever see, this is why I always say, I don't think I'll retire. It's like, I want to keep moving forward. You know, I think there's more to always achieve. Dude. Yeah. It's like, it's a feeling of like, you finish something and you're like happy, but mm-hmm. you're not content with, with the fact that you could have done more during exactly. that given no. week and stuff. You know that Dude, feeling? That's... You know that feeling? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's like <laughs> the same with big goals. Like, you accomplish this big goal and then like an hour later you're like shit like okay so yeah so what now i, what I now really exactly? wanted yeah and, and i actually learned like on a podcast that that feeling is because more like dopamine or something is released mm-hmm. in the brain while you're pursuing the goal as opposed to when you actually achieve it so actually like on a chemical level you are like happier when you're in pursuit of something than when you get there it's like when you're excited i don't know like maybe for a vacation or a trip to go somewhere that you are actually like excited about like the anticipation leading up to that trip almost sometimes is more exciting than like the trip when you actually get there Mm -hmm. yeah and i think yeah. yeah And I I think this is why it's important to like, you have the massive goals, but like, you know, every week you're setting goals of like, you know, I want this stuff done or like, I want to do this by the end of this week. And like every day, uh, like I want to get this done. You you know, you like, you need to use those pleasure chemicals to like help you get along the way. And like, maybe I've gotten completely addicted to those and completely addicted with like accomplishing things. I don't know. But like, you know, I think, I think that really helps you like set the direction and to keep moving forward. You know, I, I think the most frustrating days I have are days where I look back and I didn't work as much as I wanted to, unless I spent time with like family or something. Like if I didn't output as much as I know I should have, those are the most frustrating days for me. Um, and so obviously, again, it depends, but like, I, I think you can use those pleasure chemicals that we have to really push yourself forward towards whatever you're trying to achieve. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that like, it's important to set those targets, like you said, because like Tony Robbins says, like success is like hitting a target. Like, but if you don't know those targets, like how can you feel successful? And that's something I've done. Like I've gone like and worked all day, but then I'm like, okay, like, did I get that done? Like I didn't determine in my mind, like what would make me happy if I got this done today? And um, something, one question I have for you guys is like, someone listening to this who we talk about like just doing what what lights you up and things like that like how would you advise someone to like figure that out like try a bunch of different things like because I know that um I don't know sometimes it's hard to to know and and I don't think you ever really like sometimes like know with 100% certainty you just gotta like go for it but uh what would you have to say Honestly, I think for me, it's yes, try things, but like, don't necessarily just go out and be like, oh, I'm gonna spend a day on this and a day on this and a day on this, because you're not going to really get a good view of everything. Like, I think for me, just start something like you have an idea in your head, like maybe it's a business, maybe it's not, maybe you want to be a good programmer. So my backstory, you know, I didn't plan on being any kind of entrepreneur, like that wasn't at all in my mind. Like my first thing was, oh, my brother's a programmer. So let's jump into that because this seems cool. Jumped into it like, oh, this is fun. This is good. And went into an entrepreneur boot camp and came out like, oh my gosh, like I want to be an entrepreneur. So like, it's not even going to necessarily be the thing that you think you like in the beginning. It's very likely going to pivot. You know, you might go into college, um, think you're going to be like some chemist or something and get out and be like, actually, I have this cool business idea. Uh, like I, I have a friend who left, uh, left college as a chemist and is now, you know, a business analyst because uh, he completely 
he switched because he realized like doing something else later on, he's like, this is actually really awesome. I, I think the whole idea of having your life figured out is kind of an illusion. You just mm-hmm. do stuff like you do stuff. And like, if you figure out what you're actually wanting to do, like why you're 50, like that's fantastic. Um, I think it just depends, but like, you know, you've got to be willing to say yes and no to things. Um, you know, there are lots of job offers that you're going to get that you probably shouldn't necessarily say yes to that. We love to say yes to, especially as college kids, when we're like new to all of the um, different career types and different choices that we have. A lot of the times we just go and try everything and we say yes to way too many things. Um, so I think that's a skill that you need to be able to build up too. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I guess for me, I, I think it's just like phases of life. Like back in middle school, all I did was play games like every day, bro. Like not even, not even joking. I used to play games a lot. That was like one phase of my life. And then I got into high school. And like, I think like once you advance in life, you have different goals. And then I knew I wanted to, well, first of all, I knew I wanted to earn a lot of money. So I'm like, <laughs> what's the job that makes you the most money? Computer science. And then, so I got into CS because of that. And then I did iOS development. It's pretty fun. I like the UI. I love the intuitiveness of coding, you know, iOS apps. So I got into that. And then it's just like, you just, you just do it, you know, honestly, it, you just, it's the process of doing things. And if you, if you enjoy the process, there's a good chance, you know, that's what you like to do. That's yeah. like, that's your passion. So, yeah, I really do think it's like, just try things. Um, like you might not like it the first like 10 times, but like, you know, eventually you're going to stumble upon something that you're like, this is what I was made to do. Uh, I genuinely believe that. It's also like, um, like, what do you want to, what do you want to do for the world? Yeah. Like, yeah. Actually, find, I think find like a, find like a goal to help others and, you know, find something that can, the means to that. Yeah. I think that's actually really important is like, try to f- kind of think out like who you might want to be at the end, you know, like who, they always talk about, um, you know, you being on your deathbed and being surrounded by the people that you could have been, you know, like you don't want to leave those unlived. You, you know, you might be on your deathbed and have like the billionaire you or the professional football player you or whatever, like all these great people that you could have been like decide who you think you want to be and then go towards that. You know, for me, it's like, I want to be a big business magnate. Like, so I'm going to go towards that. Maybe that changes in the future and that's fine. And if it does, and I'll learn along the way, but it's like, I think starting with the end in mind and setting like an end goal that can really help too. But I think there are like three techniques there um, that people can try to use for things. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Pierce? Yeah. So I think that that's good. Like kind of planning who you want to be at the end and kind of like reverse engineering that. But I think that also it's like so important to be like, aware of yourself and to constantly kind of like reevaluate not to like doubt yourself because I think that a lot of times I can get into the into question myself like oh like should I be doing this and and that will lead to not total commitment and I think that you do need to commit to things Um, but I think it's like realizing like oh if this really doesn't make me happy I'm just gonna switch and try something else like but if you keep like doing that and just not give up like you're inevitably going to get to where you want to be because i think that the only thing that holds people back to from getting where they want to be is like giving up like if you can just like learn and and keep pursuing like you're going to get there it may take one year may take 20 years you know but like at the end like won't you be super fulfilled like getting there Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah, yeah, and I, th- I think that I, mean, I can never do twenty years, but I feel like if, if it takes you twenty years to do something, that, you're doing something wrong. You gotta like, you gotta figure out a better way to do it. I'm not necessarily. Some things genuinely take a long time. Like scaling a business is gonna always take. a Yeah, long for time. sure, for sure. But like, 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 but your business should be growing every yeah. couple of yes. years. Like yes. that's a, that's a small goal you want to set. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I think to yes, you need and you need to have like small wins along the way and things mm-hmm. like that to keep you going because if you try something for 20 years and it doesn't work, yeah, you're right. Like you're just you shouldn't insane. Be doing you're just insane, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, but if you're constantly evaluating and pivoting and things like that, like, okay, you're going to get 
get there because yeah. maybe that goal is like making a billion dollar or like getting to a billion dollar company or things like that. Yeah. And I, I think something that's really important to highlight too is something I really suggest people try to do. Like I didn't do this in originally and my output really suffered for it. Like actually setting like daily goals of things you want to get done or weekly goals or monthly goals. Like you actually set these of output, like be results oriented, you know, focus on what you're outputting. Uh, again, depending on like how ambitious you are and what you want to get done. But like, you know, for me, I really ambitious. I want to build something big. So like for me, it's every week, every day. I'm like, did I get what I had set for today? Like, did I get my goals done? Cause I think a lot of the times, you know, I had days or, you know, months where I hadn't set goals and it's just like, Oh, I think I accomplished a lot. I worked a lot. And I look back at my output and like, I actually didn't output like literally anything. Like this is like actually, really unproductive but now uh you know i've been talking to kevin recently like i have outputted so much more this year because i've had like goals that were set i was like i'm going to accomplish these you know i'm going to review these goals be like do these line up to help me get to my end goal of who i want to be um, See, and just like uh, every day just making sure i'm like getting things done yeah that's the caveat of being so process focused i feel like you need a mix of both process and also result focus because yeah Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just get way too into the process and like you spend too much time on like a feature that you shouldn't need to spend that much time on. And so having these mini deadlines that you know that you should meet, like that helps you like um, output more, like Andrew says, and then you iterate it, on, you iterate it, you iterate on it in the future. Um, it's like an MVP, like you build MVP first and then you iterate on it afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Well, too, because you don't know like how good something's going to be until you just get mm -hmm. it out. Like, I think yeah. that's something I do too much is I'm trying to be a perfectionist when yeah. in reality, like I just need to get stuff out exactly. and see how it goes and things like that. And qu Andrew, I have a question for you. Um, what are some of your like <sighs> daily, weekly goals in your business right now that like you share with listeners? I mean, it, de an it depends on the week. Um, so say this week, for example. Yeah, so for, goals for this week, dude. Um, for the, well, I'm this week's ending. Uh, actually, <laughs> so this week was a little bit different because it was my birthday week and I was home, so I had family the whole time. Oh, um, a big happy thing, birthday. Yeah, thanks. But I mean, like, big things for me is like with school, I wanted to get everything done in school to like November 7th. Um, so I like wanted to get all my assignments done early. Um, I had certain VR, I had certain VR features that I wanted to have launched by the end of this Wait, week. Do you have I two think. monitors, dude? Uh, yes. Nice. Well, I have a, it's a TV, but yeah, it's basically it's another one. Monitor. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like things like that. It's like, you know, if you're building an <clears> app, like <throat> set aside like a certain feature that you want to get done. Uh, and something for me is I always try to think of like, what would a really high performer in society get done by the end of today? And I try to match that. Um, like, I think that's important to really speed up the pace is like, you know, if I was the ideal person of who I wanted to be, and I was outputting as much as I wanted to be outputting, what would I get done? And every day, that's something that's really hard to actually accomplish. Um, and it's always like pushing yourself to the brink of like, can I actually accomplish this today? Because it's, it's a lot. Um, so again, I actually like that a lot. I actually like that a lot. Yeah, I, I think that helps you move a lot. That's like, that's like being the type of person you want to be before you actually are them. Like I'm an intern software engineer right now, but if I have that mindset of outputting the same amount of work as <clears throat> a regular software engineer at Tesla, like that could, that could actually help me so much. Mm -hmm. I actually like exactly. that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I think, I think that's like essential, right? Like you have to become the person before your external reality, like acknowledges it. Like internally, you have to have that like millionaire mindset or like be a millionaire before you're actually rewarded like i don't know if you guys know uh someone i follow jesse itzler he's like crazy successful he started a company called marquee jet and they sold the net jets to like warren buffett's company and, and just started zeta zico coconut water and just very successful entrepreneur and he used to walk around and like condition his mind saying i'm a millionaire i just haven't been paid yet yeah for years uh -huh. and then like he became a millionaire and it's it was just like wow like that realization of like you can decide right now to like live like a millionaire like you can get up early you can meditate do those things and then like you're not gonna wake up tomorrow having a million dollars but if you like keep conditioning your mind and looking at other people 
seeing their process and modeling that because you don't have to make anything up. Basically, everything's been done before. So mm -hmm. just model the people that have already done it. Exactly. But, but that's a great point, Kevin. Yeah. I like that. Learn from your predecessors. Yeah. yeah. But we are short on time. So we're going to have to say goodbye. I know, sad face. <laughs> um, Pierce, did you have any last words that you wanted to say or anything? Yeah. Um, I think like something that's been hitting me really today is like just kind of deciding to start to be the person that you want to be like yep. you you may not be making like a million dollars or, or things like that but like if you decide and start to condition your mind and have those daily rituals of someone who might who is where you want to be like it's only a matter of 